What's happening, everybody, on today's show? It's an AMA, you ask us anything, fantasy football questions, random questions, and a lot of food questions, shockingly, of course. Enjoy today's episode. Hey, Foot Clan, you already know that FantasyChamps.com is the best place to go get that very important fantasy football trophy championship belt, ring, whatever you need. Tell me more. Yeah, I will tell you more, Mike. But <laughs> right now and for the next uh, week or so is especially the best time to go because if you put in a trophy or a championship belt, one of their perennial trophies or a championship belt, into your cart, mm-hmm. and then you put one of the rings that you want. I don't want to pay for that ring. You don't have to, Mike. You put in, <laughs> you put in the code free ring, and that code takes away the cost of that ring. It becomes free. A free ring, a free championship ring. Imagine free that. Free championship bling. Oh, oh. On don't, those don't confuse me. Fingly fingers, Mike. <laughs> what is? Yeah. So go to <laughs> fantasychamps.com. All right. Add a trophy or belt to the cart. Add your favorite ring to the cart. Put in the code free ring. It'll become free at fantasychamps.com. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Thursday, January 9th. A jam-packed show today. Oh, so much jam. Mike's wearing a Kirk Cousins jersey. Oh, oh. why, yes, I am. This old thing. <laughs> ah. pick, you got to pick your spots with a Kirk Cousins jersey. Today's a day that it works. Yes. Hopefully next week as well. Yeah. Doubtful. Yeah. Did you, you say doubtful? Uh, I don't know. I, somebody did. <laughs> That's weird. Would, what would you say the 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 chances they were going to beat the Saints, Jason? I would say they were they were not good. I would have said uh, I would give them a solid twenty percent chance to beat the Saints. That sounds doubtful. It was very doubtful. That I look. I didn't say impossible. You I have said to, doubtful. You have to imagine. You they didn't have just say it. You sang it. A better chance against San Francisco than against New Orleans. Because I, the way I look at San Francisco, and they're they're who I picked to win the Super Bowl in our bracket, but they are also kind of you know inexperienced playoff wise with this this team. So that would be kind of the argument I would use towards Minnesota having an opportunity to beat them. The Saints were very experienced at home. Minnesota took them down. I would say it's going to be a very good game. The argument that I would make, and the reason why I, I sing doubtful, mm-hmm. is just because I feel like that that felt like the Super Bowl for the Vikings this last week. This whole Vikings-Saints rivalry over the last couple of years in the playoffs and the emotion and the high, and it was like they won, they did it, and now they've got to come down off of that while at that same time you have the 49ers getting an extra week to prepare. So they're, you know, they had the two weeks – to get ready to get healthy, uh, I think that bye week's going to help. Well, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt yeah, to have the home game. I agree that the, I would give the edge to San Francisco. But you never know. Mike's got the jersey on, so he's doing his best. <sighs> yes, I'm supporting the team. They say never kiss your cousins, but he's willing. If oh, it gets oh the vi- Kirk! If, if oh, it give him a some- big fat sloppy smooch. <laughs> I believe that's how it would be as well. <laughs> oh, man. Come here, Kirk. Come he, here, big guy. He'd have to wipe <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, at the FF Ballers, the fantasyfootballers.com is the website. Just a little bit of news, a little bit of news before you get into um, a little update on Beat the Ballers as well as this week's picks. And then we've got the big AMA today. So uh, you guys sent in questions of all sorts. I, I will tease it by saying... Brooks categorized the questions three ways, which mm-hmm. maybe says something about us. There's, you know, fantasy football questions. We 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 know what those are. I would expect those. There are random questions, right? AMA, ask me anything. Okay. Random is a big topic. But then there's another like category called food questions. <laughs> so there so were so many food were, questions that they could not fit into random. That is I, right. I think what we just learned is that we or I need to launch a new podcast. A food, <laughs> just a complete 
food related podcast. The people you do not need that so much. You, you it's not don't me eating. Need, you, <laughs> no, it can't help the situation. Yesterday on the Spitballers podcast, you revealed that you feel as though you have a full size Clementine in your chest at all times. It's more my upper abdomen, but yes. <laughs> so I can't imagine you focusing on food during the duration of a podcast would help that situation. I That's just, all I'm saying. I'm surprised you think that right now I'm not currently focused on food. Uh, well, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Sweet. Here's the news we have. Joe Judge, a little competitor to Giamatti himself, <laughs> taking over now as head coach of the New York Giants. He was the special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach mm. of the Patriots. Those Patriots wide receivers, great year. Uh, <laughs> and so Joe Judge, within arm's length of Bill Belichick on a weekly basis, gets the job in uh, in New York. I believe he's the second youngest head coach in the NFL at 38 years old. So when we do our coaching changes episode, we'll break down the implications. It was a, I don't, uh, I don't think a hire that I knew was possible so yeah there you that, go I, I remember seeing uh, his name floated around a little bit before the the hire but it seemed like it was like one of the laundry list of people they're interviewing and it was probably going to be you know they, they they wanted who the who the panthers got and they didn't get him and then it seemed like there was ja like, rule yes <laughs> oh, oh murder <laughs> and uh and then all of a sudden as soon as ja rule got signed by the panthers <laughs> Immediately they come out. They're like, uh, "We we got we got we got Judge. We got Judge. We wanted him. That was our first pick." Is it because he sounds like the alias of a superhero? Wasn't there a Judge Joe on yes. TV? Oh yeah. So now you got Joe Judge. Mm. That's really not a just an observation. Just an observation. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't. It's not a, helpful. It's a palindrome. No, it's just. <laughs> it's really, I'm not impressed with myself. Uh, the Redskins uh. hired. Uh, X Panthers offensive coordinator Scott Turner is their offensive coordinator as well. Again, we'll break down all the coaching changes um, when we get our heads around the implications. And there are going to be more changes. There's going to be a new head coach for the Cleveland Browns at some point. And um, I think that's it for news. You guys got anything else you want to want to touch on? Joe nope. Judge. Joe <laughs> Judge. Beat the Ballers, presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, so we're, we're through week one of the NFL playoffs. And if you go to beattheballers.com, you can participate with us in week two. Last week, uh, you're laughing, Mike, at me, I think. Uh, no, I would never. <laughs> look, the way this works is if you, can, if you can pick three players, any three players from any of the matchups, and you can beat all three of us, well, the you, three players have to be in one matchup. Correct, but it, but I'm saying if you pick three players from, let's say the uh, the Vikings San Francisco game, right, and somebody picks three from another game, but their scores outscore you, and Jason and myself, you win a share of some extra quiche over on Monkey Knife Fight. So you go to beattheballers.com to participate. It's uh, a twenty five hundred dollar prize pool, straight to you, real money. You can take it out of your account if you win it, and then. The final week is a ten thousand um, dollar prize pool for the Super Bowl. But last week, <laughs> just to break it down, Mike uh, fifty five. Oh. Oh. Fifty five percent of listeners. Yeah, not great. Knocked you off. Yeah, I was Adam Thielen was so close, and you had a pretty good week, but not good enough. Jason, uh, you beat just twenty four point nine percent of the listeners. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Now okay. I don't I'm think a... either of you would be proud of yourselves. No. If I'm super proud, it wasn't for the my generosity. Did you play three guys? Not really. <laughs> I will say that 98.4 percent of the listeners beat my score. Now, 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 now correct I me picked... if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. All you have to do is beat one of us to get basically a a, a free five dollar uh, entry in another yeah. game. So you're. You know, if you're playing a five dollar game here, all you had to do was play, and you get a free game. Uh, but that's not true. You did beat one point six percent of people. Oh, and those, those people are so those sad. Those people are really sad. I had done the Boston Scott, Miles Sanders, Tyler Lockett stack in that one game, and they did not do much. 
So this week it's going to be a little different. It's brand new, so you can come participate, beattheballers.com. This week um, I'm picking from the Houston-Kansas City game, and I'm not giving you no layup this week, Foot Clan. I'm going Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, DeAndre Hopkins. All right. Okay. Impressive, eh? Very impressive. No, no Boston Scott. So, uh, Jason, who are you going with this week? So, this week I am looking at the Minnesota-San Francisco game, and I wanted the running backs. I wanted Cook on one side, Mostert on the other, and then George Kittle. He's just too yeah. too big a beast. I mean, there's a lot. I came in this morning. I was talking to Brooks. I was like, there's just so many options here. If you wanted to go Debo or you wanted to go Thielen or Diggs, or, you know, it, but I went Kittle. And, uh, and you're going Mostert. You're just, you're, so, you're counting on that touchdown. No, that no, he's I'm not. done in six consecutive games. No, I, I, I get it. I don't believe he has to have a touchdown. I think he can have enough yardage, but he obviously. I mean, they're just such a good running team, and Mostert has been the lead dog. So, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm relying on Raheem Mostert and Kyle Shanahan. And his touchdown, and his touchdown. And Mike, where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to pick from the Seattle Green Bay game, and I will go Devontae Adams. And Aaron Jones, I am going that side of the ball. I think that Green Bay wins this game, so I'm, I want my I want, I want my selections heavier with the 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 higher points total. And then I will take Tyler Lockett. Oh, that worked well for me last week. Look, it it it, it was <laughs> it was clearly it was a DK Metcalf uh, week last week. And when when I told Jason who I was going to take, I said like I'm taking Lockett. I'm taking he's really over Metcalf, and it was. Tyler Lockett still had eight targets last week. Is was, it a DK Metcalf future, though? Is yes, it going to be a Metcalf that's, life? That's going to be a very interesting... Metcalf life stadium? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> had to try it out. They're not all winners. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. But, yeah, th this offseason, of, and when we get into draft season, deciding Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf, I mean... That's going to be tough. I, I remember a very similar discussion back when it was Doug Baldwin versus Tyler Lockett and trying to decide when that balance of power shifted. Well, and you can already kind of have a preview in your head of what the narrative is going to be. It's like the known commodity of sorts in Lockett versus the what if with DK Metcalf. Right, if, if and, Metcalf really takes the next step, this would be a great rookie year. There's just no way I would ever bet on Lockett to score more than DK Metcalf. So then it's involvement. You know, I know Metcalf, is, I mean, he's, he's just humongous. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty large. So those but, are our but, picks for this week. But By my the point way, was Lockett had eight targets. Metcalf had nine. So it wasn't like this huge uh, target disparity. It was... Metcalf came through with the big game and had the big touchdown. So uh, head over there, beattheballers.com to participate. You beat one of us, it's a free $5 game. Beat two of us, you get a free $10 game and an entry to the Ballers Bowl. And if you beat all three, you win a share of the $2,500 prize pool, plus two entries to the Ballers Bowl, beattheballers.com. The Ballers Bowl is $10,000 divvied up to the yes. winners, yep. which I think this last week we had. Yeah, we, I mean, it. everyone beat me. <laughs> That's for sure. Congratulations. Uh, not this week. Before we get into today's AMA and the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor, Sonos. Oh, yeah. When you're watching a game at home, you can still feel like you're actually at the stadium. Thanks to Sonos speakers, which provide brilliant sound your way. Look, every Sonos speaker is designed from the inside out for incredibly detailed sound. Deep bass. Deep Deep in. If oh. you're listening on a Sonos <laughs> right now, it would be the beef deepest brisket, the deepest bass possible. Your dishes are shaking. <laughs> what? The bass oh, is shaking the base. your dishes. Ah, okay, I got it. Look, okay, they're fine tuned by Oscar and Grammy winning producers, mixers, artists. They're, they're, I thought it was a guy named I, Oscar. I too. They're fine tuned by Oscar. You know Oscar. The, he's that grouch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what kind of sound system Oscar's got in there? Sonos. Yeah. Sounds Look, so good. <laughs> we all have Sonos speakers throughout our entire houses. Look, Foot Clan, you know I'm a music guy. You know I care about audio. I care about how things sound. This is why this podcast always sounds great. Sonos speakers are legit. They are. They sound amazing. You can have them everywhere through your house. You can start with one speaker. You can connect more over Wi-Fi. 
And look, I'm telling you, I love my Sonos stuff, and you can go to Sonos.com to learn more. That's S-O-N-O-S dot com. And hey, Foot Clan, we want to thank HelloFresh, longtime awesome sponsor. You can get mouth-watering, seasonal recipes, and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. They make cooking at home fun and easy and convenient. I know myself, my, me and my wife, my wife and I, I don't know what proper grammar is, but... Just keep going, the man. Two Ask of, Oscar. The <laughs> two of us, uh, we, we like cooking together and making meals together. And actually, my son has taken a liking to cooking. It's just, it's so easy and fun, and there's nothing extra to, to the, no waste. You know, everything's pre-measured, pre-delivered. Everything is made in 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with the quick recipe options. Uh, they, they've got more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, and you're going to get something delicious that fits your lifestyle, all sorts of options. It, they're wonderful, and you will love them. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS10 and use code FOOTBALLERS10 during HelloFresh's New Year's sale for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS10 and code FOOTBALLERS10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Mailbag. AMA. I was secretly hoping you'd do that, Mike. I heard you. I heard you loud and clear, big guy. Welcome into the mailbag. Welcome into the Footballers AMA. We received uh, a lot of questions, right, Brooks? Just a lot of various questions. Oh, yeah. All over the place. Some food questions, some random questions about um, the company, and then a bunch of fantasy questions. So we'll jump right in. What kind of question do you guys want first? I'm going I'm to ask you that. I want, I want to start with a with a fantasy football question. Is, uh, we're the fantasy footballers. That's a strong point. Strong point. All right. From Instagram, uh, we've got uh, a question, Dynasty League question. What is the best time of the offseason to do a, a mm. Dynasty startup draft? So you're starting a Dynasty League. Some of you out there, uh, you've always done redraft. Maybe this year you want to jump into a Dynasty League. When's the best time to do that? It, it's tough because if you're you're sitting around right now, fantasy is gone. If you're not in in dynasty leagues already, and I get it, you're you're already itching for more fantasy. Well, you should check out beattheballers.com first of all. To fill Play that with in. us, yeah, some playoff fantasy. But because you got to wait, the the best time to really do it is after the draft because the draft changes so many things, and it changes so many things that we did not see coming. Like you're talking about a running back where it seems like their job is secure. Like I, Leonard Fournette. I'm not projecting this, but because no one is, no one's projecting that the Jacksonville Jaguars would spend a high capital pick on a running back. But then these things just they happen, and, and teams surprise you with your pick. So you don't want to have spent a high dynasty startup pick. I mean those. Those first few rounds, those are very, very valuable picks. And you do that draft one time. And then time. the draft blows it up. Yeah, you only do that right. draft once. I mean, this, this is, is your the, team. This is the beginning. So you need to give all the owners the best opportunity to make strategic picks, not random picks. Yeah, it's really tough. I always want to do it like right middle, now. Like, yeah. it, you know, as soon as the Super Bowl is over, it's like, okay, let's, let's get our dynasty started. But Andy's right. No, no draft means more than a dynasty draft because that's your team forever and you're drafting, you know, 25, 30 guys. And so you want to make sure that that draft is as fair as possible. It stinks to start a forever league with a forever roster with mistake picks that were just, you know, if you had drafted later, you never would have touched them. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. What kind of question you want now, Mike? You pick it. Random? Fantasy? Let's go with a let's go random. Okay. Uh from Facebook, Bernard Franklin Bernard Allen Jr. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh former my goodness. obviously former president. That is correct. Uh founding had, father. He's founding on the two dollar bill. <laughs> founding father, <laughs> Bernard Franklin Allen Jr. has a question for us. He said, Do you all ever get in fights? And so he means like, do we get into verbal Verbal Battles, disputes. Disputes. You know, I think the fights that I can think about were genuinely fantasy football. <laughs> like, when, we're, when we're really, when we're, when we're yes. in the lobby arguing over Russell Wilson, I mean, that, that's still not a fight, but 
No, not really. I yeah. mean, sorry to disappoint you, Bernard. I know there's been probably <laughs> we time. disagree. We, yeah. Of course, lots of times. Uh, I I don't think we've had. I'm sure over five years yeah, we've upset been each other yeah. here or there, but literally when I look back at the five years, if you were to say name your biggest fight, just the the one that comes to mind. I genuinely can't. Right do now, it. it's the Russell Wilson fight. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't. Oh, that, do was, it. that was a spirited debate over nonsense. Yeah, you missed that, Andy. <laughs> it was a good time. Well, I got the beginning of it. I just went up to bed and didn't know you were going to spend the rest of the night in the lobby together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't get in a lot of fights. We certainly disagree. In, but I think that that's key to like a successful business in general is you're kind of working through so many decisions over the years for your business. We're pretty aligned at the high level on everything here. Um, but when you get into the nitty gritty, you're, you're kind of bouncing ideas off one another. You might be really like, if you don't have passion about building your business, then, you know, you'll certainly never get into arguments, but you also probably won't end up with a really quality product. Right? Yeah. We disagree on decisions and then, and then come to a consensus. Yeah. And that's what makes our products the most incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and us the most humble. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Then, Jason, let's get you a food question okay. real quick. Because that's a category this year. Uh, from Caleb uh, on Facebook, what is the best thing that you can do with a tortilla? Ooh. Ooh. Is it a taco? Is it a burrito? Is it a quesadilla? Uh, is none or of those is it things. another soup. thing? What soup? Tortilla soup is pretty that good. That is an option. That, that is a that is a very low option. Oh, I on know the what list. Jason's is. Chips. You think you know what mine is? Yes, you're going to say a cheese crust. I knew you thought I was going to say that because that is definitely one of the best things you can do with a tortilla. Jason loves a cheese crisp. Just you, the and you prefer crisp. that over a quesadilla? I mean, I 100. It, it's really just. It's folding it over. It's an un. It it's an open quesadilla. <laughs> it's an open. That's what I'm going to start ordering. Can I get an open face quesadilla, please? <laughs> uh, open face cheese quesadilla. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I love cheese crisps. Uh, crisps. Um, but I think that if you actually take a a quesadilla and use it to make a dessert, like either cinnamon you sugar with tortilla? butter, yeah, a tortilla or or uh, peanut butter. Interesting. It's hard to beat that. Mm. I go burrito. Yeah, it's hard to go away from burrito. I think the burrito best. Is a, is I think of the best quesadilla, the best burrito, the best taco I've ever had. I think the best burrito takes the cake. Yep. So I'll go there. All right. Um, let's go to Instagram here. Here's a question from Hurricane Tomas. How do I manage having Hurricane. DJ and Drake in a dynasty league? Oh man. Trade now. Trade later. Keep. What do you do with David Johnson? In a David dynasty league. Johnson. <laughs> In a dynasty league right now, you want to hold him because the the ups. I mean, the value. Unless I don't, somebody. I don't think anyone is going to be trading for David Johnson. That that's just my belief. And if they're trading for him, they're trying to get pennies. And the hope, because David Johnson is done in Arizona. He is. There is no chance. It has to be. There's no chance he is relevant for fantasy if he is a cardinal. And I think the odds. What if are, Drake isn't back though? Yeah, that was. It popped into my head for the first time. What if Drake just doesn't come back and they're like, yeah, David Johnson was really hurt. He has offseason surgery. He's our guy next year. And do not forget I that, be shocked. O- that, that over – let's see, I'm, I'm trying to pull up his chart. David Johnson over the first six weeks was a top 12 running back five of those weeks. For fantasy, yeah. He, he, was, he was very valuable. But for the Cardinals, he was not because he couldn't run the ball effectively. He was great – as a receiving option. Most of the Arizona outlets, you guys can both attest, expect David Johnson to I, not be here next we year. We should come back to Jason's answer because it's the right one. I would not be trying to shop David Johnson in Dynasty because you will not get value for him. The value to be found for David Johnson now is the hope that the Cardinals trade him. Maybe they eat the contract, but they trade him. They get draft compensation, fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. He goes to someplace like Tampa Bay, Houston, someplace where he can start again and be a primary ball carrier. And then... You know, at that point, you don't need to do anything. You've right. got two players on two different teams. And Drake, Drake is a, a clear hold. He's going to be great because he will either resign with the Cardinals or he, the only way he doesn't resign with the Cardinals is if someone pays him 
a lot a, of money. A lot of money that the Cardinals aren't willing to match, in which case, good. Because, you know, when teams pay up for people and they're invested, then they, they've got to get them the ball. It does feel funky to have both those guys on your dynasty roster right now and go, well, what's the future? Yeah. At the running back position. Do, do I have two running backs? Do I have one? Do I have to plan to draft some? You know, that question is there. But I think, I think in time, you'll be okay. I agree. Yeah. Um, all right. Do uh, you want me to hit another random one? Here we go. Twitter, Paul Myers. Hey, Paul. Not a founding father. Uh, at what point did you guys decide to leave your day jobs and jump into this full time? Really early. And was that scary? <laughs> really scary. <laughs> I say it's scary. Uh, for, for me, the day job left me. <laughs> 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 it was not an active decision by this guy. A couple times. Uh, uh, yes, Sorry. and a few times. Sorry about that. Glutton for the punishment. Uh, it, look, it was, yeah, that, that ship had sailed. It was already uh, that I need to find something new. What's next for you? And I like had a couple irons in different fires, and, and the podcast happened to be one of them in the podcast. It, it was... We started in the off season, and it was apparent pretty quick that we we had something special here. Listeners were were gravitating toward the show, and you could see that the the way that listeners are coming in right now, if we do commit to this, it could work. I mean, and that, it was still a could, and it was still very scary to have three families reliant on what seemed like a pipe dream still uh, turning into an, an income that can pay mortgages for three families. but And it took a while. Well, it, it did. It, it took a while. It was very scary in the beginning because I remember there was a six-month period yeah. where I believe my, my take-home from this company was $1,500. Yeah. Six-month period. That's we not three, really enough. We have, <laughs> I have three children. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, how it worked out, I don't know, but uh, we're, we're grateful and thankful. Yeah. I, it's funny because I'm, you guys would attest to this, I'm the, the biggest planner of the three of us. You are the, you're type A. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a type A person. Yeah, I like having the ducks in a row, generally speaking. But for whatever reason, I was never scared. Like, I never really thought... I never really put into my head, what if this doesn't work? So whatever happened early gave me enough confidence that if we worked hard at it and we and we put it out there that it would work. Um, for those that, just taking it back a little bit, because some people ask this question too, uh, the reason Jason sl- kind of quietly apologized to Mike when Mike said he had no <laughs> job was because our we had worked together uh, for many years at a tech startup doing gaming, uh, Facebook gaming, iOS gaming, uh, Jason uh, was one of the owners of that company, and Mike was the game audio engineer of that company. And so when that started to change and transition, uh, that's why Mike was um, employed occasionally. <laughs> audio engineers are the first ones yeah. to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, a little dispensable. It's just like public schools. Art has yeah. to go out the door first. Oh, that's Aww. a way to take that down. Aww. All right, Instagram question from the Sandman. This is clearly... Adam Sandler. Uh, how do you handle being trade happy? Ooh. So does uh, this mean like yourself? Like, is this a question to me? Like, how do I handle wanting to trade all the time? Probably. Yeah. I, th- I think that's what it means is like, you know, when you're the trade happy person and you just, you're always needing to trade. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you cope? How do you handle life? Um, with joy. You trade. <laughs> realizing that that brings me joy in the league. Like I... The so trans- you, be- you become happy from trades. So I if think you trade I- happy, you become a happy uh, trader. I it, think that's the truth. For me, it's fun to have the transaction go through and see if you made the right call. It's like there's a-, a shot of dopamine when yeah. you get a trade done. We oh, all know this. Faux show. Sure. And then there's another one when you poll your league and say, who won this trade? Yeah. And you win that poll. <laughs> and another one it's, when the player you traded. It's part of the game. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I would say this. You still, if you're trade happy, you still have to, if you want to continue making trades, you still got to be a smart trade partner. You can't just assault people all day long just to get that shot of dopamine or you're going to lose all your trade partners. You've got to be smart, but it's fun. I mean, in our keeper and dynasty leagues, you know, 
last year, I remember when I traded Gurley away before the season, that happened over, you know, a lunch with a friend from the league that all of a sudden it becomes a trade discussion. That's just what makes fantasy enjoyable. Man. All right. Every time you bring up these dynasty trades, I just think about when we were sitting right here, I believe at this desk, and we concocted that John Ross for Mark Andrews <laughs> trade, and I regret <laughs> it so much. It didn't. Work. I mean, look, me and, I still me and Mark are, but, are yeah, happy. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. So here's a couple of mic questions. Okay? Oh, these are the best kind. Uh, from Instagram. So we've got uh, – I'm going to ask you them both, Mike. You can answer however you want. Okay. First is, does Mike literally record all the guitar riffs himself? Yes. Second is, what is your guitar setup, Mike? How many Ooh. instruments can you play? So my setup is in Logic – I do it, everything they call it inside the box, meaning like I don't have, I don't have the time to set up amps, set up microphones. I just I, I plug in, and it, if you've spent enough time with plugins and things in Logic, you could. Like, I'm happy with how it sounds. It could, could it be better? Of course, everything could be better. But I'm I'm very happy with the the setup of just recording direct into Logic. How many instruments can I play? Uh, like with fluency. Yeah, like if you're handed an instrument on stage, how many would you not be embarrassed to begin <laughs> begin playing? Yeah, sure, uh, <laughs> that's a great way to look at this question. Because <laughs> like, if we gave you a trumpet, <laughs> would you if go to town playing I played, a song? I played the trumpet a couple years, so I could. Oh man, I could have it make noise. Okay, and if it's a stringed instrument, as long as you like, if you hand me a violin. I could play pizzicato. You could. I, I can't use a bow, but it, all string instruments are basically this. It's all the same concept. How long would you spend on the stage with the violin before people started leaving? <laughs> I could. I could get a good forty-five seconds out. Oh, of it. Okay. 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 <laughs> no, but with with fluency, where I feel comfortable, uh, bass and guitar, I could make a a keyboard. Can work, you dr can you drum? And I I can play the drums with competency. Okay. And you a keyboard, you said? Yeah. And let's throw the let's throw the trumpet in there. Fine. Sure, I'll, I'll handle it. What about the recorder, Mike? Would you, could you go to oh, town on a recorder? Some yeah, hot cross of course. buns. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. How many instruments could we hand you, Jason, up on stage before you, could you got embarrassed me, you with could, what was coming? You could hand me a guitar and a piano, and I would play each of them very fluently for one about, song, about six seconds, and then I'd just walk away, and you'd go. <laughs> I didn't know he knew how to play <laughs> the piano. I've I've pulled that move before. I can play about six seconds of a really nice. Someone can see your house. So you, you do that. Like, they're like, oh, two chords. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. All I can right. Play more than words on a guitar. Oh, that that's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so that's that's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Facebook question from Kevin Powell. He says, "Have uh, have you ever?" Or when was the last time you dabbled in other fantasy sports like Ooh. baseball or basketball? Uh, so Andy and I got into fantasy sports way back in time when we went to high school together um, in fantasy basketball. Basketball was my love. Shout out to Sandbox.com. Oh, mercy. Back in the day. Basketball was my love, my passion, uh, I think both of ours at that time, and so um, I remember, I think it was last season, I gathered a group of people together to play a fantasy basketball league, and we did a draft, and I have no idea. I don't think uh, I played one second after that draft. I was looking for Steve Nash. I was looking for Sean Marion. These guys were not there. All I know is I was able Larry to, Johnson, I was able Alonzo to, Mourning. <laughs> I was able to draft him Hardaway, and so I did. Because it's his son, <laughs> different one, and he plays basketball now apparently. And I was excited to have Tim Hardaway on my team and Rick Smith Jr. <laughs> and uh, fantasy basketball was my first introduction to fantasy sports as well. This, I played pretty hardcore. This for a past while. year, I did not play fantasy baseball. The previous two years, I had played fantasy baseball. Didn't you uh, win a championship? The, one yeah, the first year I jumped back into it, it's I just did too much. I did win a championship, and then I played one more, and then I decided. Not to play. It's too much. It's super fun. It's very different than fantasy football. I mean, fantasy football are these like, you know, peaks and valleys. The valley you prepare for the the weekend and then you go play. Baseball is just like you always have something to refresh on your phone. Which if, if you know, for someone like me, that's a little dopamine shot to always refresh right. and say, oh, there's a baseball game that started at ten in the morning, oh, and so I've got some points accumulating right now. But uh, it just became a little bit 
too Why do, much. I, it, the daytime, weekday, daytime baseball games blow my mind. That you got like 12 people in the stands because everyone's at work and at school and these professional athletes playing this game that matters. What has what? What a dumb game. <laughs> okay, now I know what we fight about. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, because I am like a complete baseball apologist. I love baseball, but I am very – well, no, Brooks. Brooks, you love baseball. Oh, yeah. So Brooks and I are alone <laughs> in the office. All right, here's a question from Ma Matthew Brown on Facebook. What is the absolute earliest you could see yourself drafting Lamar Jackson next year? Ooh, the 102. What? In a super flex league. Okay. Oh, man. I'm just saying, My that, heart that is the absolute earliest I could All ever. Right, but answer the question. You're in a redraft league. It's one quarterback. The earliest you would take Lamar. Would you take him in? I would, I would take him in the fourth round. I would go earlier if I was feeling interesting. <laughs> I would I would consider him in the in the third round for sure. Usually there are a lot of running backs and wide receivers I still – very much like in the third round. He's one of those, though. Sure, and no, I I understand that. He's but, a running back, but I just it's it's not a matter of where he is worth it to me so much as what you're giving up in exchange for him. What 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 that tier is, and I think in the third round, those running backs and wide receivers are still too good for my positions that need more depth to give up in the fourth round. That's usually where you see that top end talent drop off. And, and I, I'm trying to play devil's advocate sure. a bit to to argue it but and we just if we enter fantasy football seasons with last year's number one quarterback they're the top quarterback on the board they don't this historically speaking they don't repeat Lamar Jackson feels like he could repeat decently close because he's gonna run like, Lamar Jackson should have a thousand rushing yards next year if everything goes according to plan but you enter this year going how can Patrick Mahomes possibly fail it seems impossible well he gets hurt his touchdown regression it, it his touchdown percentage that came down and Patrick Mahomes was not the advantage that you thought you were drafting in the third or the fourth round in Lamar meanwhile Lamar Jackson was because you drafted him so late like Kyler Murray will be a very attractive later round quarterback who could do some, he could he could break out similar to what Lamar Jackson did this year. The like, way that you phrased it needs to be focused on for a second, which is, will he be the advantage? Right. That's the way to put it. Is he an advantage, and where does that line get drawn? Because you don't – sometimes these magical seasons happen, and they just happen, and everything comes together, and then where is he still an advantage for your team? I think the odds of him being an advantage at the quarterback position are very high. But what kind of advantage? Like, and, he'll and, he'll still be great. Sorry, Jay, but uh, the the rushing yards, I think that will be there. But Lamar Jackson threw a touchdown on nine percent. Wow! And nine percent clip, like that's that's impossible for that to sustain. When guys throw, I'm trying to pull the stat off the top of my head, but like when guys have a, a season above the seven percent mark, which is like that's bananas i mean it, hopefully people understand that on every nine percent of of uh his attempts it turned into a touchdown like that's absolutely ludicrous those numbers regress generally by a full two percent now if he can hit seven percent that's still going to be out a, a great mark for lamar jackson with his rushing totals but his advantage will not be nearly the okay, same okay okay but let me for a moment and i don't have all the data in front of me to analyze this but I'd be curious about what the differentiation is between quarterbacks that do it's it's efficiency based low pass attempts a lot of running at the quarterback position Russell Wilson for many years ran the ball right. a lot more had a very seemingly unsustainable touchdown rate last year Baltimore was second lowest in pass attempts in the NFL he passes 27 times a game all the running game and his rushing attempts get them down into those high percentage opportunities where he's throwing the ball inside the 20 I would just be curious what the correlation is to running quarterback versus 
you know, Kansas City throwing the ball 35, 40 times a game. Yeah, I, I agree that the percentage should stay pretty high, even if it comes down from nine. Like you said, if it comes, if it goes to seven, that's still going to an outlandishly high number. Um, and in which case, he's great. He's going to be great for fantasy. But the difference is, you look at your leagues right now, and you think, well, gosh, every league I'm in, it feels like Lamar Jackson was in the championship. So if I just get him, I'm in the championship. But it's what Mike said. That's because he was drafted late. They had their running backs and their wide receivers early, and then they had Lamar Jackson. If Lamar Jackson went in the first round this last year, he wouldn't have been in as many championship games. A la, you know, Christian McCaffrey was pretty common. We will have zero shares of Lamar Jackson in any league going into next year. Yeah, on, between the three teams, we'll have none. We'll have none. Uh, Instagram question. It's a simple one. It's a food-related one. Okay, I'm ready. Creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Creamy. Oh. Crunchy is delicious, but you can't spread it. Creamy is the answer. Creamy. I'm with you. Creamy Brooks, wow, what do you think? I what thought do you think? we were going to fight. I'm with you guys. I mean, look. They just I, an occasional out. crunchy sandwich is good. Look, like, I, I would like one every once in a while. Here's, here's the thing. I guess the, if you're talking like, okay, it's a, it's a sandwich. We're, we're talking sandwiches here for peanut butter. Am I making the sandwich? Because if I'm not making the sandwich and you just hand me a nice crunchy peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> it's I'm the all work. about it's that It's the life. work. But spreading crunchy peanut mm. butter, it's not, it's just, it's not feasible. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's feasible. For someone else. Right, right. And yeah. not for you. Not for me. Yeah. Um, Instagram question. How did we get crunchy peanut butter where, like, they were, they were making peanut butter and, and some dude's like, yeah. Let's put some peanut. No, that's good enough. I really I'm think the question gonna, I, I of how did we. I can't go all the way to creamy. I mean, the question of how did we get there, it does not seem like a leap that they would use the very substance they make the butter from in its full form mixed together. I'm guessing that the that the you know the blender that is chopping up all these peanuts just kind of broke a little. <laughs> the motor ran out. And then yeah, the motor's getting slow and so a lot of chunks are coming through there. Ship this is, it. This is too yeah. <laughs> Pack it, ship it, change the label, say crunchy. We did it on purpose. Crunchy's per I haven't had a crunchy peanut butter sandwich in a good decade. It's still delicious. Don't hear what we're not saying. Crunchy peanut butter is Oh, not. I'm saying. You, you're saying it's bad. Yeah. So if someone uh, yeah. makes it for you, Mike, I, you still want creamy. I don't creamy. want it. You still want creamy. That, that is correct. But you're also a guy that doesn't go jelly, right? You go honey or something? Yeah, I, I prefer honey. I'll eat a PB&J, PB okay. but if, I have my, if I'm left to my own devices, it's creamy and honey, yes. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. Uh, Twitter, John Frank, if you had to leave Arizona, where would you live? Mm, great question, San Diego. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I just look. There are coastal people and there are mountain people or lake people. Right. People Den that want to go ski, people that want to live by a lake in a cabin. I'm I'm in on that Denver life for at least half the year. You I'll spend my summers in Denver. No problemo. I don't need the coast. I just want perfect weather. That's all. I, I want to be able to go outside. Have With fresh, crunchy peanut butter sandwiches <laughs> delivered to me. <laughs> delivered to me. Fresh, clean, perfect 75 degree weather. That's all I want. That, so, that, th well, that's not so much to ask. Yeah, so that's where I say San Diego is just like that. It's 75. You know what temperature it is in San Diego right now? It's 75. You know how I know that? Because it's always. Yeah, but what about tonight? 70, it, oh, at if you if you're out late enough past sunset, it'll be 75 degrees. But if you get up <laughs> super early in the morning, it's 75 degrees. Oh, it's that's just, that's why San Diego. But that's also why if you want a house in San Diego, you have to be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. I I think I'd rather live on the coast. Like if I was right on the beach, if you could live anywhere, right on the beach would be slightly better to me than the cabin in the woods or the the lakefront right. property. If I maybe. had a beach house. I don't. You guys know me. Like I don't have anxiety I, about anything. I just uh -huh. I, just I making crunchy peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> right. Well, that's not anxiety so much as displeasure. <laughs> um, but I would have anxiety of like a of, of a tidal wave if I lived on the beach. Mm. It's just no. That would you want to live cliffside? I would want to live up high. Yeah, on a big cliff. Heck yeah. You not, okay with that? I mean, because then no anxiety of falling off the cliff. That's or? right. Okay. Don't know why. Wait, maybe a zip line down <laughs> off the cliff Ooh, to the beach. Heck yeah. And I know I could hang Ooh. out on that zip line for a good would five you, minutes, right? Would you go zip line or would you go like giant fireman's pole? <laughs> oh my gosh, the chafing. Oh, oh the burns. The first time he tries, he just would. lets go at the top and splatters because he's, <laughs> he's burning himself. Yes. Like, this is cool. This is cool. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the zip line for those reasons. <laughs> I'm just imagining him now, like, to use this fireman's pole, he's lathering in Vaseline mm-hmm. just so he's fine. And then I did just slip <laughs> off. No! Oh, you're going like 200 miles an hour down this thing. <laughs> Where did we go? How did we get here? All right. <laughs> A couple more. Instagram. Uh, who's your favorite late round quarterback for next season? Oh, man. I don't know great... who's late. Well, you brought up Kyler Murray, but, but I, I don't think he's going will late. He, will he end up still being late? No, Probably because not. the Cardinals will draft like a great wide receiver and I, he'll go I into year two. I can tell you who mine is. All right. Genuinely. Now, unless Tom Brady goes, as I think he might, to the Titans, Ryan Tannehill. Did you just say the Titans? Yeah. Yeah, he had this whole spiel about what? Mike Vrabel taking. No, Brady's Brady. not going to the Titans. Yeah, that's what They're I They're not said. bringing in an aged Brady when they succeeded that's what I with said. Tannehill. That's the. That's fight worthy. Jason's, uh, Jason's got to take. They're well, going to let Tannehill go to get 43 year old Brady? <laughs> just do it. makes no sense. But Tannehill. He just beat Brady with Tannehill. Tannehill is my late round quarterback that I'm all about next year because I know he did it. I know he was very good. He was like the quarterback three once he took over for the Titans in week seven. But he's not going to be drafted as a top five or, or top ten quarterback next year. It's just not happening because he's Ryan Prescott. Tannehill. And I am all about Ryan He'll Tannehill be. finishing as a top five quarterback next year. Uh, uh, guys who I think can go late, I bet if he's still there because it's strange in Carolina, but Cam Newton with this new like college offense, that's very interesting to me. And – let me ask you guys this. Let's say Jameis stays in Tampa Bay. Is he still a, end up as a late-round quarterback? Jameis always ends up as a late-round quarterback. I believe he would be... Because if, if Jameis is back in Tampa Bay... Yeah, he's... he's I'm, I'm, I get it. It, you, might be you, Car- it might be Carson Wentz, to be honest with you. Yeah. So yeah with weapons that finally come back. I mean, he had, he had such a good year. This is why late with round no weapons. late round quarterbacks are great because maybe it's Carson Wentz. There's so I'm many. fine with that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'll take him late. I mean, he maybe was, it's Matt Ryan. It, there yeah, are, the number one pass attempt team in the NFL. Yeah. There's just there's just too many options. Yeah. All right. Last one here uh, from Instagram from Hexo. You're the owner of an NFL franchise. Oh, nice. And you I'm have moving to, to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to find a new head coach. Here's the only rule. It has to be an active player who then gives up playing. Who do you choose? I'm going Drew Brees before you guys can answer that one. Uh, oh, that's a great one. Yeah, that's really good. That's a good one. So you have to take a player off the field and make him your head coach. So Is active in the booth doesn't count? I can't take Romo? Ooh, mm. he would have been. I, he I, been I like that one, but that's too. not the spirit of the question. I got no, think but that it's harder. You want you want some leadership. You want likability, right? I doubt Brady being a head coach would work out very well. I yeah, I'm not. No, no, thank you. Because <laughs> I mean, I still got to work with the guy, right? I right. own the now You can take Witten if you want. Oh, he is back in He's there, still playing football. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, man. Okay, so let's see here. Does anybody jump to mind? Other than I mean, it's it's hard to not have your your mind drifting towards a quarterback, since they the field general they should know an offense. Yeah, but you got the Vrabels out there, I'm right? The take, linebackers. Yeah. And, I'm going to take Luke Keekley. Ooh, I, very nice. I think Luke Keekley knows football better than yeah. That's a great answer. Anyone, he's the Tony Romo on the defensive side of the ball that just he knows what play is going to happen before it happens. That was a lot like Vrabel, and you know, there's no situational football that's going to catch Luke Keekley off guard, and he's going to be unprepared as to what should be the right thing to do in this situation. So he's my guy. Yeah. So he has to give up playing. It's unfortunate because I want to say Russell Wilson as the head coach of his own team. Oh, you want him to be a, <laughs> a, a player so coach? He can, he can say, this is how you're supposed to use me. Yeah, yeah. All right, that'll do it for the show. That'll do it. Thank you for submitting all the AMA questions. We want to thank Pristine Auction. As always, supporting the show, Kenny Galladay, a signed jersey yesterday, $57. Ooh. And here's the cool thing. You go to pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Well spelled. Thank you. And you put in the code BALLERS, 
and you get a $10 credit towards a future sports memorabilia you purchase. So you don't have to use it right away. You can browse. You can find your favorite players, teams, whatever the case may be. But put in that code BALLERS. Register at pristineauction.com. BALLERS. And that'll do it. So, Are you a crunchy or creamy, Brooks? What do you think? Oh, definitely creamy. Creamy, of okay. course. Yeah, definitely. I'm more of a cheese sandwich guy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> See you, guys. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And remember, Foot Clan, upgrade your game day experience and enjoy brilliant sound your way with Sonos. Getting started is easy. You just plug the speaker in, you open your app, and you're going to connect all your favorite streaming services or your television, and things will have... They will have never sounded better in your house. Go to Sonos.com to learn more.